Yes, so I am first man Rastafari living here in the tropical island of Jamaica. You're going to be having a very special wake and bake moment with Captain Huta right there in your homes. Yeah, man, take care of Captain Huta and give it to the world as best as you can. It's Captain Huda. Hello. Dzień dobry. Bon dia. Dobre utra. Dobre utra. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wilujong Enjing. Buenos dias. Hello. Everybody online looking good. Sawadi krab. Good night. Dobro ranku. Bon dia. Kumoron. Habari a subuhi. Good morning. <laughs> oh hey everybody hooter here coming to you high and alive from the beautiful tree here in pandora just kicking back and enjoying this scenery dude how beautiful is this world how cool is it to be able to create your own world like this you know the guests that i have on today is a lady who's actually done that. She's created her own world, her own community, her own, her own system. I'm talking about Lauren Mundell. You might know her as Auntie Lauren from High Curious. She is, she is a truly amazing lady who again has already created her own environment and her own scenario like this. And now she's about to do it again with something new. And we're going to be one of the first ones to find out about it. How cool is that? So check out this video with Lauren and I'll see you back in a few minutes. Ciao. Hola, hola everyone. Hooter here coming to you once again, very high and very alive on a wonderful, beautiful, warm night here in Portugal. And I am delighted to have a lady come and join us here tonight who you will probably know is Auntie Lauren, but this is uh, Lauren Mundell from High Curious. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. So happy to reconnect with you. I know, that's what I was gonna say is, that, you know, we connected, I just had the Mommy Jane on the show. And, uh, you know, she is a delight. And, you know, we, uh, after, after the uh, event that we attended, which was MJ Biz in uh, Las Vegas, we all started connecting with each other and kind of following. And I learned all about uh, High Curious and became a member over there and started following all of your, your wonderful, cool stuff that was happening there. And then what happened was that I just ended up doing this interview and it was the first time I had thought about you in a while. And I go, hey, what the hell's going on with you? So I wanted to get you on and say, hey, what the hell's going on with you? Well, and here I am. I mean, two days later. So thanks for your patience, you know, getting me on. <laughs> and we're here to talk about, you know, what's happening. That was so, that was like right before the world ended. I mean, it was 2019. Um, like it was, I think it was December, 2019. And we were, yes. uh, had no idea what was about to befall us just a few years late, just a few months later. But, uh, so we all went a million different ways since then. And, um, and, you know, everyone's kind of found their way and lost their way and come back. So, um, you know, it's been almost what now it'll be what three years. So, wow. Did you wow. end up getting COVID? I have not. You got lucky. I'm well one done. of the lucky ones. I mean, they say that even if you don't like think you had it, you probably did. But uh, I've been pretty well. I've never had, I haven't had anything that required me to take a test. So, well, right after I saw you, um, my wife and I, we were in Las Vegas. We got on a plane, flew back uh, to California, and immediately got sick. And she got really, really sick, and I only got partially sick, uh, uh, I think because of the wonderful consumption of marijuana that I had been consuming. But uh, she, she got very sick, and uh, I think she got one of those initial first doses of, of, of the COVID right off the bat. 
Yeah, um, I think my husband and my son had it as well, uh, like in February of 2020, before it was known to be a thing and before we had any tests or anything like that. So um, they were both just down. And my son, you know, who was, I think, 19 or at the time, he was like, this is the worst I've ever felt. Like, I can't get up. Like, I can't, you know, I just feel like I'm pinned to the bed. So yeah, but uh, now we're on the other side where the CDC is giving us guidance that, you know, okay, well, this is just like the flu now. So just like go about your life, which isn't like the best considering how much long-term damage it does to some like people and also how much like of a Russian roulette it is. Like, you know, some people are fine and some people are like dead. So it's really, it's insane. <laughs> it's not, it's not a good way to go. Uh, I ended up just getting it again uh, while I was at Cana, Portugal. I got the newest version, and uh, this was a much better version. I got it hanging out with uh, Mila, the hash queen. Uh, she was in the booth right next to me, and you know she's by far the most popular person in the show. So uh, I had literally every single person from the show came through and visited with both of us, and uh, yeah, I got a good dose of it, and uh, it definitely will uh, it'll take you down. I was down for about a, a good week. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going this weekend to something very cool, um, but it's one of my first real exposures to a lot of humanity, and I'm looking not really excited about it, especially because I don't have at this point like I boosters aren't really available, and um, I'm not feeling that great about it. But you know, gotta like life goes on, you gotta go. So I'm getting on a plane on Friday. Um, flying to Michigan and it's in uh, it's this really cool cannabis carnival. It's going to be like an indoor outdoor 21 plus consumption event. Oh with yeah. Like, um, and there's like a Ferris wheel and like a bunch of carnival games. And there's like an, a, a roller skating rink inside um, where everyone like, so it seems like it's, and like lots of vendors selling cannabis and cannabis related things. Um, and I'm going with a couple of my influencer friends. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that. So yeah, you got to go, but I'm like, you know, I'm happy that most of the stuff that I'm going to participate in is outside. Yes. And like, I'm not a big hugger or toucher. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a lot of interviews. So, you know, I'm going to have like, I have, um, you know, some different mic covers and stuff like that. I'm going to try to do, I'm going to say. I'm sticking with trying to be safe. Like I've always been kind of a germaphobe. I was raised mm -hmm. by a germaphobe. So uh, I'm that's... always doing the sanitizing and the cleaning and thinking about it, you know? So I was thinking that, you know, the last time I saw you was at one of those types of events. I mean, we were going around from party to party that night uh, at MJ Biz. And at that point for me, <coughs> Pardon me. That was probably the most spectacular cannabis event I had ever been to. Um, I have to say, and I met more people that at that one event than I think I have at any other event, even since then, including Spanibus and and you know the the German event and and uh, I was reading one of the articles that you had uh, posted not too long ago about the five mistakes that, that companies make. And I loved it. Thank you. I thought that was one of the first times that I had seen somebody actually call all of that correctly. Because as I'm talking about glamorizing all of this, about going to one of these events, the reality is that if you're running a company and you are trying to make it in this very competitive business right now, um, great to have the relationships and the contacts and everything but can you talk a little bit about that article because it was so fantastic and and you know I, I think again you're you're right on the numbers here well thanks I have a lot of opinions about how <laughs> cannabis businesses are showing up um, because I I am a marketer and I love business and I'm really interested in seeing the industry grow. And I'm like a student of, of business and marketing. So I love to watch other businesses outside of the cannabis industry grow. And I, and I've worked in many, you know, for many fortune 100 companies um, throughout my career. So 
when I see what the cannabis industry is doing, I'm like, who taught you this? Like, where did you learn this? You know, and um, one of the biggest mistakes that I, I see, and I think, you know, I was kind of a sucker of it in the beginning too, like you said, is the, the conferences. Mm-hmm. And I think it's great to be able to meet people. Like you said, I love being able to go to a place where I can, you know, one-stop shop to kind of meet everyone that I want to get to know who I've met online. But what the problem I see with the cannabis conferences is that brands are spending money, like tens of thousands of dollars to go to these conferences. And then they say they don't have budget for the types of things that they really should be spending on. And that is like reaching the consumer. So I feel like they're, everyone is talking to each other and like not to be crass, but I'm gonna be, it's a little bit of like a circle jerk, you know? Yeah. And and like <clears throat> nobody's out, like this is like, you know, Las Vegas, right? And like ev- everybody's here in Las Vegas talking to each other, la, 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 acting like they're big shots. But then there's the rest of the country and the world who like, you know, are buying cannabis, of course, but are not educated yet, don't know anything. And they're literally waiting for brands to be responsible and educate them because that's how consumers learn. You know, we, we, we go to websites, we, we watch what brands are doing. We, brands are usually the ones who have all the money to be able to do research. Like if you think about Pepsi, the PepsiCo's and the, you know, and the Pfizer's and the big companies of the world, they're the ones driving research. But in the cannabis industry, research hasn't been able to be done for many reasons about federally, federally, you know, legalization and all that kind of stuff. So I understand why, but we're not speaking and well, I am, so I'm not saying we, but like the, the, um, the general cannabis industry is talking to each other and not to the consumer. And it's because everybody's, it's too expensive to talk to the consumer. It's very expensive, but I would say you've got to start somewhere and take the $25,000, $50,000 that you plan to invest in conferences next year and invest that in content creation with creators who actually have okay. the audiences of consumers that you actually want to reach, who will start to then tell the story of how they love this product and why you should buy it, right? And that is what's going to move the needle, not these, you know, trade shows where people are just paying to play. And, you know, so the richest people are on the stage. So that means that you think that they're the smartest people, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are. So I just think, you know, I mean, five mistakes that cannabis businesses are making was like a, a scratch, you know, mm-hmm. of, of, the, um, of the situation. But I, one of the top ones, and I think this is what you were getting after was con- is conferences. It's just... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, God, I, I mean, I, I have met some good contacts at a couple of good brands and uh, I, I can't say that it's converted any sales from me in, in those those things. They're great contacts. And the things that I did convert in were normally things I was going to convert into anyway, uh, regardless of whether I would have seen them there at the conference or not. Right. It's definitely saw- an ego, a lot of ego. Um, and you know, a lot of jockeying for position within, like, I'm just kind of like, I've always said that business, uh, the corporate ladder is the ladder to nowhere. Like nobody knows it's not a thing. So stop trying to climb it. I mean, I've been certainly victim of the one being one of the people who's trying to fucking climb it. Don't get me wrong, but like, dude, you're a hustler. You, you know, I, 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 my, my number one memory of you that night was you hustling the shit out of High Curious all over the place, dude. Well, I was hustling everything that night. I yeah. was, <laughs> I was like, like, I mean, I was with some, you know, in my opinion, and I think and continue, it continued to be some pretty like important people in the cannabis industry. You know, I was with Kristen Yoder and I was with the mommy Jane, two like super important people in the, you know, in the space who are going somewhere with actual influence um, for Kristen on the business side and for Jesse, you know, on the actual consumer side. 
Yes. And so I'm like, we got to be treated like VIPs, you know, we're rolling in. And so I'm like trying, I've been in the PR like my whole life working with celebrities. So I'm going to treat them like celebrities act like we're supposed to be there because we were. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I was so turned off by like those events, like that there was no water to be had, that you could yeah. not smoke in like anywhere except for like a weird creepy bus. And like, <laughs> obviously look, the world is changing and but i was just still new to yeah. you know to the cannabis world versus the corporate world and the cannabis world is just so far behind yeah but dude you know this next one this i'm not sure if, it, if it's going to be in time for this year but you know i just had chris on from planet 13 and they're about to have cannabis consumption lounges in las vegas mm. oh oh I mean, once Vegas has control of those kinds of lounges, and from what I was hearing, the stuff that they're talking about with, you know, uh, game rooms and dab rooms and uh, uh, restaurants with infusion in, a, in such a wonderful way, they're talking about tacos and having like the guacamole is infused. You can get 10% and you infuse yourself. Right. So, right. Oh, see, it's just, it's going to be heaven there. It is. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a whole, like, kind of like if you're really into Harry Potter, for example, and you go yeah. to like <laughs> Harry Potter world, that's going to be what it's going to be like for us. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Harry Potter world for us. I can't wait. I'm, I'm can't so wait. excited to come back there. I mean, it's a, uh, it's something else now. But you it's know, going to be a while. It's still, everything is slow. Don't rush. Yeah. Well, I don't know. They're they've got plans. They've got they're <laughs> they're ready to go. They're ready to go over there. Uh, you know, when I left, like when I left Las Vegas and for uh and for a year, I mean, almost right after COVID hit, so that had to mess with with High Curious. I mean, you were you were just in the process of that getting really revved up. <laughs> so it's interesting because I built High Curious to be a brand in the cannabis industry. And, you know, I really never was, a, and still, you know, um, cause we're gonna talk about our pivot. You know, I wasn't um, always like, oh, I have to have an app or I have to have this. I just knew that in order to have a brand in the cannabis industry, which is something that I want, I needed to build a community around it. And I was already um, at the time working with a lot of fitness and wellness influencers and so I was looking forward to building a community of cannabis wellness influencers. Um, and that is really what I started doing. And that's why that year I was at um, MJ BizCon. I had like, I think seven or eight women staying with me. Um, we're all influencers. So we got the word out about what we were doing because I had people with like, you know, I had like over a million Instagram followers being able to see what was going on in my house, you know, wow. versus like, yeah, so and what we were doing. So that was like, and that was kind of how I, I really grew at that point a lot. Right. Um, and then after that, when my plan was to just keep doing that, to just keep traveling, doing these houses, getting sponsors for the houses, you know, because look, I can command this, you know, house with eight people in it who have really, you know, it was like high society mama stayed with me. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. um, Jessamine who, Jessamine's like, you know, she's in a whole other world right. and like, you know, I have all these women and then still to this day, I've been building these relationships because I love these women. Like, I just yeah. want to help them. And, you know, like Kristen, like, I just always want to just like, you guys are, have all the power, but they don't realize they have all the power and brands aren't really like sort of giving them the power that they deserve because they're holding the keys to the audiences mm -hmm. that are going to make the decisions about what they're going to buy. Yeah. And, you know, and nobody's really, pay that's like my big, you know, nobody's really paying attention to that. Um, well, I'm paying attention to numbers. it. Me, yeah. But I, I had just had a perfect example of that because uh, just had the mommy Jane on and, uh, in the first 24, 48 hours of the time that that video launched, she was one of the highest rated, uh, highest watched uh, out of all the videos, uh, had the most, I mean, and, and is con 
continuing to to rock it uh, over there. Uh, right. Blown away. Blown away. You know, I mean, she has a ton of power because she she attracts people like her who are looking to change their lives. Right. And cannabis is like it's a permission to enjoy that part of changing your life, you know, to make changes, sustainable changes, to be a great mom, to like all these things, but use cannabis. And I think between Jesse, Jesse's also taken some time off over the course of the past, um, you know, couple of years and the past year, uh, she has been an art teacher, which has been, I don't know if she shared that with you, but like, it's just, I follow her on her like private, not like her family site, not her like, yep. you know, mommy Jane. And it's really nice to see. I mean, she's such an incredible mom. She's an incredible artist. She's an incredible spokesperson for anything that she has passion for. Um, you know, natural she, talent, natural talent. And, you know, it's been so hard for her um, and hard for all of us. The other, like, you know, the other person who I think has the most power in the industry, like Jesse is Bianca, High Society Mama, you know, her, she hosts a, in addition to having, you know, four Instagrams with over 100,000 followers amongst all of them, she also has um, a, a clubhouse that she runs every Sunday where she has about 300 moms stop by every Sunday to talk about cannabis and something related to parenting. And, you know, it's so powerful. And she, these, these women are creating, you know, and I have to give myself some credit too, like we're creating communities of people who are now open to talking about cannabis when three years ago, nobody was open to talking about cannabis. Right. So we're opening up such a, a, um, a portal, honestly, for companies to be able to reach the consumer in a really authentic you know, um, non-salesy way because just the other day for a perfect example. So I have this PAX 3. Um, mm. I actually have had it for, it actually got lost at that party that we met at. And um, <laughs> some because it has my name on the back of it, somebody and, and my business, somebody sent it back to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. The guy who owned Power Hitter, that guy sent it back to me. So um, I was just, I had it on and I, I it's packed, I, you know, like it is actually packed right now. And like, I turned it on and I waited for it to heat up. And I, all I was doing was just holding it like this and talking about it. This is a, you know, a 200 plus dollar device. Two people bought it during that live. Wow. That's the power of what yeah. I can do, what Jesse can do, what Bianca can do, what you can do. You know, those of us who are actually speaking to people who are making choices, you know, with their dollars versus, I just feel like, yeah, I just feel like all these shows are all just about talking to each other. And mm -hmm. there's this entire wave of people that are just being held back by that. I totally agree. And you know, the thing is, is that with, with all of us, and one of the reasons why we all clicked is the, the word passion. We all have a very strong passion for this plant, for the flower, and also for finding the best, coolest shit that we could possibly find. And, and that was like obvious right off the bat. And uh, you know, that, that- The other thing is we all wanna help people. Yes. And this plant, I think, really only helps people who wanna help people. Like, I really do believe that, you know, that's like my little spiritual moment Mm -hmm. for today but I just really think that if your mission is to actually help people then the plant will support your mission you know and the universe of course you know because because it's good that's good you're supportive you're constructive you're you know creative you're not d all the d words of those things right yeah. we're working for the plant we're all working for the plant we are employees of the plant that's that's yes uh, and sometimes we get paid and sometimes we don't <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly you know there's there's uh i think that there's uh, an interesting trend that's starting to take place and and i i see it a lot i saw it a lot in the gaming community a lot more than i'm starting to see it now in the cannabis community where um people are now starting to really appreciate 
um, the advice and the words of some of the people like you and like Jesse and like myself who are again going and and constantly looking for you know the best of the best of all of these different types of things and the solutions to all of our number one problems exactly and that's, that's what it's really all about and we are a community it's it's funny you'll see when i uh, i i created a cool opening for your show and uh Thank you. I, I it's a um uh it's it's the 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 city uh pandora if you know what pandora is okay and it's a virtual uh, version of that that somebody created cool. and what i was talking about is about what you did and what you've been doing which is about you created your own world and you created your own community you've got your own people all that you could be you know living in this paradise here it's so um, true i um you know one of our marketing pieces says imagine a world where cannabis was considered a wellness supplement now what if i told you that world already existed and is on an app that you can just download right now from the app store and that's really i built this so that i didn't have to deal with the stigma and the shutdowns and all the things that were going on and be able to keep my community together because when COVID hit you know i was planning on continuing my whirlwind tour but that was shut down and I had to communicate with my community virtually. And I knew that social media was not the right way to do that because of all the risks to cannabis creators on social media. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I decided to build the High Curious app in the first place to help people have a place where they knew that they could keep their cannabis content and their cannabis community safe from outside social media and the stigma also of their like you know aunt karen yeah <laughs> aunt karen that bitch, bitch. <laughs> right i so. had an aunt i had an aunt karen she was an aunt donna but she was an aunt karen she she was one of those that had her mind in everybody's business all up and down the street and uh yeah. we all got one of those yeah you know or uncle Good. uncle chad or whatever ah now uncle norm was completely different that dude grew some bud in the backyard uh, <laughs> one of the one of the first guys who let me uh let me roll a joint with some of his uh his flower that he had <laughs> love it what do you think is happening with the industry right now uh, i mean at, on a big picture because i mean i was just looking at uh, some some pictures and i mean all the big numbers i saw one company out of the top 25 that was making uh, or didn't have a loss i don't think they made money but they uh, they maybe made 20 million or something was it gti else, uh possibly i'm not sure i'll put the graphic up here though uh, when <laughs> uh, we do so, the video so hmm so what do i think of the industry i think that the industry is inside a giant popcorn popping machine right now Ooh, like, like you know almost like like you know the jiffy pop <laughs> and yeah. everybody's trying to pop you know but nobody's really working together everybody's working separately from each other and trying to like almost like out pop everybody um and i think sometimes uh there's a combination of doing your own thing but also like pointing fingers at what other people are doing so for example, obviously I'm not a big lover of the MSO gang. Um, you know, I luckily live in Colorado, so I don't have to shop uh, big cannabis, but yeah. you know, and then seeing, you know, you see that Cure Leaf is owned by Russian oligarchs and GTI is, you know, GTI and True Leave is owned by uh, the white is run by the wife of a now convicted uh, felon for briber bribery, um, you know, and so it's like, what I mean by the popping is kind of like, everybody's just trying to like, I don't know, get to the top or something. Yeah. 
Um, and everyone is, but nobody's looking at what anybody else is doing, like in terms of from a good, in a good, from a good standpoint, like, and then say, how can we like link arms with these people? I mean, I think there's a lot of people leaving um, the industry right now. A lot of people who came in, like at the time that I came in, who are like, fuck it, I've wasted all my money over, which like I'm in that boat, wasted, you know, spent all my money and all my investment and all that over the course of the past three years. And it's not turning out how I want it to. And I'm out um, like Martin Pierre, for example, who I'm a huge fan of on in LinkedIn. Uh, she is building a cannabis tech platform as well. And it's called uh, Canolution, and she's been struggling so hard to raise that she's gone back to working in the luxury travel industry. And, you know, I can really relate to that. I think, you know, I've been trying to work in the mainstream sector and trying to get a lot of um, my own, like, in consulting work to keep the business afloat over the course of the past, you know, two years. Um, and I think, everyone's tired, you know, we're starting to be tired and with inflation and everything going on in the country and the world, it just seems like an untenable personal situation to stay in this industry unless, you know, you can figure out a way to make it work for you. Like for example, mm -hmm. LinkedIn, I don't think you spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, but Brett, Brett Puffenbarger, who's like a big LinkedIn influencer is uh, looking for a full-time position who he's been like, you know, wow really like really vocal about, you know, um, about being um, his own guy, you know, and, and all and having his own agency and stuff like that. And so it's just really interesting to see how everything's going to shake out, I guess. Um, I think that there will be the good, the, the good guys will work together. And the bad guys will hopefully destroy each other. I mean, mm. you know, yeah, I, you're, it's very interesting, you know, because again, I saw those. I, I was in a couple. Of, I I love Clubhouse, so I love to jump into all of those conversations and and play fly on the wall and sit back there and just listen. Um, after I spent about two and a half hours there the other night, and um, if I could put three words into what the big message was after spending all that time there, it would have been, "Fuck corporate weed," and it was passionate. It was intelligent it was directed uh there were canadians and uh americans that were there that were doing the discussing that was the topic of the day so what was, was the that's the topic all the days so mm -hmm. what was the um you said it was concise it was act is it actionable was there anything that we could do well, one of the things that was brought up, which I've actually brought up before, is in Canada specifically, uh, Jody Emery. Jody Emery has a Twitter account, and pinned at the top of her Twitter account is a list of all of the people, the, uh, the politicians, prosecutors, police, uh, uh, defense, all of the horrible people that prosecuted cannabis for all those years, that have now converted and went over into the cannabis industry. And she documents it all. And I think there's several hundred uh, names that are on that list and might even be more. And uh, I believe if you start Googling all of the, you know, things that are related to that, or even in that thread of her tweets, I think there's some other people who have posted some other links to other places where you could pinpoint and find uh, some, <laughs> some of the traders uh that went to the dark side yeah i mean it's it's very us and them i mean even just like six months ago i didn't really see so much us and them conversation but now it's so much us and them um i think just because with prices how they have been you know um and nobody's able to make a buck um yeah. obviously the, the lobbying, prices are horrible I mean, I'm hearing things out of California that I've never heard before about uh, just rock bottom prices. I mean, as a consumer, I love it, but you yeah. know, a hundred dollars. Can of cars for everyone. Right, but like, <laughs> but, well, I mean, those premium products aren't lowering their prices. It's more on the like wholesale flower that, uh, but people aren't buying the premium stuff. I mean, 
who's buying premium stuff unless they learned about it from someone else that is not a board tender. Yeah. Hi, that's where we come in, you know, like yeah. it, it's so interesting because you cannot sell CPG products without, um, without education. There we go. Bing, 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 education. There's our missing, there's a missing link. Right? So, yeah. You know, I have a, a part of the show uh, that I throw on every once in a while just to throw everybody off. It's called the Worldwide Bud Report. And the Worldwide have, Bud Report? And I have professional interpreters and a couple of bud tenders in a couple of different spots who come on and do reviews. One of them is one of my favorite, uh, Herb Green, who's here in Amsterdam. Uh, he was one of the judges with me last year at the uh, Jack Hare Cup. And uh, he, you know, when we talk about interpreters, I don't know if you're familiar with interpreting from uh, Tricom Institute, Max Montrose. You're, you're a sommelier of weed uh, is the best way of putting it. And I don't think it's been a long time since I've heard anyone uh, or watched anyone who really truly uh, represents this as well as Herb does. You, when you watch uh, some of his, I've got six, seven minute long reviews. Uh, I think the last one was eight minutes long. And he's finding five different undertones to every single puff that he's, you know, yeah, I'm finding a little essence of, uh, of uh, hazelnut in here and a little, uh, uh, is that pimento? Maybe he's, I mean, he's, he's got, and I, I know from being around him that it's not bullshit. He, he's sitting there and he uses one of those Dyna vapes. Have you seen Dyna vapes? Yeah. Like, so he uses those, which is incredibly specific and wonderful for flavor and for being able to be specific on that kind of a level. So uh, he's, he, I, I love watching him, but He's an interpreter, and now there's there's uh, ganjiers, right? There's mm -hmm. ganjiers. Um, there's at least a dozen different types of education programs that are out there. Um, yet, when you still go to the, you know coffee shops in Amsterdam or a place in uh, Spain or a place even in Las Vegas, a lot of times you'll have you'll walk in and the guy will ask you, "Do you want to get high or you want to get stoned?" And and <laughs> You know, uh, you have to squeeze to get any other pieces of information out of them. Right. How, yeah. how, how can a brand possibly be able to reach out to their customers if everyone in the staff isn't completely educated at the highest level? Right. And that's on the brand. That's, that is on the brands to decide what kind of dispensaries they want to partner with, you know, and is it because really of the high turnover? I think it's honestly, that's not what I think it is. I think it's that the people who work, if you go to a dispensary and you meet someone who's passionate about weed, you're going to have a great experience from a butt tender. And cause you're going to be able to be like, Hey, what's new or what are you loving? Or tell me about this. And they'll just like go and then you'll go or whatever. Right. <clears throat> but if you have someone who's just there to sell weed, concentrate flower edibles. What are you here for today? You know, uh, all right. And then they're literally just like an order taker versus a salesperson and a consultant, you know, which they could so easily be, you know, why are you, you know, why did you come here today? What are you going to be using this for? Um, what, how, what, what way, you know, what are you going to be doing later today after you use it? All these things that people aren't, you know, they're not doing, but I mean, is it because of the turnover? No, I just think generally it's because it's a low paying job, um, you know, and um, so people are just the type of people that are getting those jobs aren't necessarily people who are passionate about cannabis. Well, I've asked everybody else this question. I'm going to ask you the same thing. You, from where you are, uh, in, 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 it doesn't have to be just local, but I mean, if you want to take all the United States, you've got a magic wand. You can change it all and make it the way it should be, and that and I'll and let's add uh, um, uh, mushrooms, uh, psychedelic, uh, in there on top of it. How should it be? How should it be? All right. Well, hold on. <laughs> yes, yes, I. So, how should it be? 
So, okay, it needs to be treated like a vegetable. Um, a vegetable, like a tomato, for example, that there's many different varietals of and many different farmers grow them. Or let's just actually, let, let me just use avocados as, an, as the example. So I actually worked on the avocado, uh, avocados for Mexico business for like six years. So I really understand. Really? Oh, that's that. cool. Yeah. So like that as a commodity, right? Okay. Avocados grow best in Michoacan, Mexico. This is like their best growing location, right? So I believe that we should be growing most of our cannabis in its best growing location, probably the Emerald Triangle or other places like that. And that's, and then we create a real industry where farmers are supported in the Emerald Triangle by the supply chain that is being now supplied to the rest of the country. So now we, just like we learned about wine or we learned about, you know, we learned about grapes and now we learn, you know, let's just use avocados, you know, as an example, right? We take them from the place that they're grown best and we bring them to other places to have them processed in ways that make sense for the consumer. So we get the avocados and we then Trader Joe's buys them and Trader Joe's turns the avocados into holy guacamole that they sell, you know, and, and then they put that on their shelf, right? And so the same thing. So if the entire, you know, the best growing regions of the world were growing cannabis and then other places in the world that aren't as good of gr at growing were being created as the processors and the places where the, the magic is happening, right? Now we can turn it into functional food. We can turn it into beverage. We can do all these things, but that we're not competing on who's growing the best weed in fucking Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where it shouldn't necessarily be being grown, right? right. And we're using all this energy because we have to grow indoors and all this stuff. Let's, like you said, outdoor weed grown in Spain is amazing. Outdoor weed grown in California. Outdoor weed grown in Colorado is beautiful and wonderful. If you can't grow it in your state, like, great, you can still do a million other things with the plant. So right. for me, if I had a magic wand, I would treat cannabis like a vegetable that would of course need to be regulated, but regulated more like alcohol um, than how cannabis is regulated. So for example, alcohol, it can be sold in grocery stores. It just has to be, you have to be carded for it. Right. Same thing. Why shouldn't you be able to buy something at a grocery store that is like a THC infused salsa, for example, I don't know why that one just came to my mind. And I you like just it. now can, you know, oh, oh, this is a THC product. You have to show your ID for this. Okay, cool. Right. So that's what I over, would change. Over 18 that's like a over major 21. magic wand. That's not okay. really, you know. I love it. Over, over 18 or over 21. I don't know. I really just, I can't answer that question because the education piece is so missing. Oh. If, if, we didn't have dare and we weren't in a play like if we were actually teaching how to supplement with cannabis you know things like that how then i'd be like 18 but i just think since you know i just think 21 maybe because you have to be a little bit more in control of your life to wow. Yeah. You know, and and you know that the, the, there's stuff all over the board. I I saw something the other day that uh, talked about um, mothers that used cannabis while they were pregnant, had children that were much more uh, creative and much more um, uh, 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 had more energy and had more you know a whole bunch of all these these policies. Yeah, this is one of the things that High Society Mama talks about all the time, and also Blunt Blown Mama uh, Shanitria talks about this as well, which is like, you know, moms, can of moms, right? Moms who had babies and smoked weed or ate edibles or whatever, however they consumed cannabis during their pregnancy, during breastfeeding, have these like little geniuses. And, you know, um, I haven't, I've yet to hear, hear a story. I mean, of course, you're not going to like publicize it if your kid's like 
not, you know, whatever, you're gonna be like, oh, I smoke weed during my pregnancy and my kid is, yeah. not, you know, but I didn't smoke weed during my pregnancy and I, my children are challenging. So, I mean, like we have an endocannab, we have an endocannabis, a cannabinoid system. We, uh, some of us are sufficient and others of us are deficient and we need, if we're deficient, this is what the medicine that we actually need in order to, to feel more balanced and well. Mm -hmm. So. Well, you know, the, the, one of the things I, I, I mentioned uh, to our, our friend was the fact that, you know, with social media in particular, there are, there are styles and there are people who are able to flow and there are those that need to, to kind of put things together in order to let it flow. And I was talking about her and saying, you know, you are a flower. You are also a flower. You can just turn on the camera and you're on and that's it. We're here we go. Da, 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 da. You don't need to have a script. You don't need to have known anything. You don't even have a, have a topic. You could just start off and say good morning and, and go. That's a true gift. And it's, uh, it, and it's one of the things I've started to look at some of your other, uh, and you call them butterflies. Can you talk about your butterflies here? Sure. So it's funny because um, when we first started building High Curious, I, I would already been in the influencer marketing space for, you know, 10 years. And the word influencer really had lost its meaning for me. And I really didn't like it because it made it seem like it was going to be something that people were forcing, like an influence means like pushing you into something. Yeah. So I just wanted to pick a different word. Um, and um, for me, the reason why High Curious um, is branded with a butterfly is because I believe that once like before when you start using cannabis you have to kind of go into this cocoon and you'll get a lot of criticism um, about it from a lot of people in your life when you become public about it but once you get your wings and you sort of start giving no fucks anymore then you can start sharing actually how cannabis helps you whether that be in your social spheres or on your, in your social, social media spheres. And so that's why um, the butterfly terminology actually came out. And so butterflies are people, um, women mostly, uh, but also men who share uh, how they use cannabis in their daily social media content. And so um, they can work with, you know, brands and businesses um, to actually help promote the products that they consume um, and they also all usually have either shows or podcasts or other things that they do that they can incorporate um, products in and then most of them have you know somewhere between five and thirty thousand followers um, on you know across multiple platforms um, and most of their followers are cannabis uh, consumers so it's actually exactly who we all want to reach right is a mushroom market growing also like that is it what? The mushroom market? Is this also something that? So it's funny because like, you know, obviously I'm the founder of the business and uh, shrooms are really something that I'm just starting to dabble in personally. Um, just like, you know, as you may or may not know, I only started using cannabis in my forties. So the, you know, when I really kind of stepped, I first stepped very lightly and then I just like dove in head first, which is kind of where with shrooms, I'm just like, and the dipping in my toe, so I'm very much open to um, creators for the to come on the platform who want to work with you know want to create their own communities that are safe from um, you know big social media if they want to you know um, broadcast their shows to the community you know their community our community we love that but I'm I haven't really been leaning in to psilocybin yet. Um, but I did name it high curious with the goal of it being, <laughs> we're learning, we're learning. I, yeah. I have a, a wonderful guest that I'm hoping to have on in the next week or, or so that I, is going to be right down your alley here. So, uh, and she is magnificent. I love her, her, uh, Instagram is uh, when I see her come up or her reels come on Instagram, I get a smile immediately on my face. I already know it's going to be awesome. And she's, a uh, you know, the, again, I think there's some incredibly talented people out here and I'm seeing them every single day. I'm trying to follow as many as I can. Um, it's so fun. It's actually like become 
you know, I don't really do social media for pleasure, shall we say, like, I don't have a separate account that I like have my other stuff. So this is my social media is cannabis. And I love it because I just love seeing how many new people are coming in and, you know, and everybody learning from each other and trying to grow and with everyone again, like has this goal of helping other people because they've discovered cannabis for themselves and realize how well it works as a medicine for them and how well they feel and they want everyone to know and they also want other people to stop judging them for the fact that they use this so they're trying to they're being loud and proud about it because we've got a message to share that this is not to be vilified anymore this is to be embraced and tried and you know um yeah so i love it yeah so what's the plan what's the plan what's well the plan? <laughs> Yeah, so this is like the first time I'm really talking about it. Um, but what we had been is more of a platform. I was really trying to build a social media platform for the cannabis industry. I've been trying to do that for the past three years. The goal has been for it to be a place where brands and creators can attract their customers or followers so that they can have you know tighter communities um, or they can actually, you know, talk about cannabis, use cannabis, um, and that those communities for creators would be subscription communities and for brands, they would pay us to host their uh, content on the platform. Right. However, we're, that's been going on for three years and it hasn't really been working. Um, and the reason why it hasn't been working since, you know, and, and now that I'm able, I've taken a hard look at it is that number one, building a social media platform is really freaking hard and takes a lot of money. Hello. Kudos to Aaron Richards from WeedTube because I think he's doing a freaking great job and really support him. And, you know, Hi There has a lot of money. And, you know, a lot of these brands that are ready to like build something for the cannabis industry that, you know, and like, I guess, Burner and Weed Maps are coming out with something at some point. Yeah. So it's like, I can't fight this fight anymore with trying to be something that people don't necessarily even want because I'm also finding a lot of times with the creators that they don't have the time to make content for another platform or to be on another platform. And our growth has been slow and people are like, well, I can't really just make content for 2000 people, right? So this is why we're taking a pivot and I'm really excited about this pivot and we are becoming the content creation platform for the cannabis industry. So we already really are doing this. Um, and so what you can do is you can come on to uh, highcurious.com and then head over to High Curious Premium where you can um, shop creators who are currently living out loud their cannabis lifestyle and they're working with brands already. So for, you know, somewhere between 50 and $500 a month, obviously, depending on how many followers they have, how much content they make for you, all this type of stuff. I mean, the sky's the limit for creators in terms of what they want to, how they want to price their offers. So a creator can put their rate card on High Curious, and then a brands will come on and shop the marketplace. They can purchase the offering right there. And actually, so the offering might be like, Every month I make you five reels and create, include you in five of my live streams. Um, you know, so it's really creators getting paid for things that they're already doing. So then a brand could say, oh yeah, that's totally worth $50 a month for me. Now the creator has a sponsor, right? Somebody who's paying them $50 a month to do what they were already doing. So now of course they're going to love up on that person more. So now then they could also have a hundred dollar offering where they do actually make, you know, reels for people where they give brands those reels to use. That was $50 would be something like, you know, just sponsor what I'm already doing. A hundred dollars would be, would you like me to make you a custom reel that's about your brand? So, and of course it depends on how many followers you have. Someone like the Feisty Fit Yogi who has over 10,000 followers or Cooking with Kush who has 12,000 followers are going to be able to charge a lot more than someone who has, you know, is just starting out. But the beauty of it is it allows creators who are just starting out to get even just, you know, 20 bucks, 30 bucks here and there to just, inc you know, increase the volume of what they're making and actually get 
them making better content. So right. um, it's really they, like a dating yeah. service for brands and creators. And, and creating the engagement that they need to have, right? I mean, that's, that's, that seems to be the real missing link, you know, exactly. and you would be providing that missing link. What a great Thank idea. Thank you. So like, for example, like I'm a huge fan of the brand pantry. I think that, um, you know, I love their edibles. They're uh, based in California, but also do have a, a distribution here in Colorado. They're, um, uh, really leaning into functional food. So everything is more than just like THC, you know, distilled down to the molecule. It's more, it's really about whole, whole plant. Um, and also they have ashwagandha, lion's mane, all the different, you know, uh, plant medicines as well in their products. So for example, I see on their platforms, they're doing, they're making some beautiful education pieces, but I mean, coming from them, it's not as, meaningful because they don't have that many followers. They don't have as many, they don't, they're still building. So they need an ambassador program, bunch of people who are going to be also sharing that message, right? Because mm -hmm. you just posting what's amazing about ashwagandha isn't going to get the engagement, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. It's about talking to the people and asking the right questions and following It's about up. stopping talking to each other and starting talking to people who want to use cannabis. You know, uh, as you know, I'm, I, I've been doing this for a while now. And, uh, you know, I'm a member of, I think, uh, eight different cannabis apps. Uh, I think I'm a member of something like uh, 74 or 75 different cannabis groups on Facebook. <coughs> I'm a member of about 25 different groups on Clubhouse, uh, which I visit on a regular basis. You have to be engaged in talking to your people all the time if you're going to build your brand. It's mandatory. If, if I would have had a, uh, an, a service like you, I mean, holy cow. Okay, so what does it cost for a company to do this? Well, it really depends. Um, and they can decide. So their budget... Maybe they want, maybe they're a small company and they're just starting out and they just want to, they only want to spend, you know, $50 a month or something like that. They can just pick one person that they want to work with and they, the creator keeps 70% of that and we keep 30 and they work direct. They, they pay, we take credit cards and debit cards. They pay, we pay the uh, creators by 1099. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so they can subscribe to somebody for a month and see oh, they made me five reels and uh, those five reels did really well for me. I actually got more sales because of this. Okay, I'm going to re-up with them and maybe I'm going to, this month I'm going to add somebody else, you know, who's on then see and then so basically it's totally scalable. So if a brand wants to spend $500, $50 or $5,000, they can really put together their entire, you know, ambassador package. Um, I love it. It's like Cameo and Fiverr put together. Yes, exactly. Yes. Dude. What a great idea. Thank okay, you. so how, how does everybody find this? Is, it, you're just right, it's still at High Curia. Yeah, when so I started? actually- Because this is like the new thing, right? Yeah, so I already um, updated the website. So uh, highcurious.com um, is where everything is available. Uh, you can click over to High Curious Premium. You can also download the app. Um, you can shop creators right there on the platform. Um, we are right now in the process of everyone who's already a butterfly putting, uh, changing things over so that they will have their rate cards there. And we're also working on bringing in more creators to put their rate cards up. So within the next, you know, month or so, we'll definitely have within 50 plus people for brands to shop and start to look at and think about, you know, um, who they want to work with. And also, um, where we'll be going will be towards more analytics. So for example, if you're working with a creator and they post, you'll be able to put a tag on that post and be able to watch how that post did and also see how it converted to sales. So we want to make, you know, that's not where we are now, but long-term, we really want to be um, able to show brands how much this type of investment in actual creator work pays off so and, and and primarily in the past when when i was on the site it was primarily women but this is now men and women and and thousand percent 
I mean, we always want men. We have DJ Junie, right? We have got uh, my husband participates. We've had a few men come in and out. We love, you know, it's definitely uh, not a women's network, um, but it seems, seems to be that, first of all, I guess I'm a woman, but also this, um, this world of influencer or creator seems to be more of a female driven space. But that said, yo guys, like let's go because many, many, many brands want to work with men, you know, yeah. because who have platforms because like, look at like, I mean, how many men like, burner per, like, right. I mean, obviously yeah. he's burner. So it's like, whatever, yeah. but like, these are dudes that speak to dudes and right. like women don't speak to men with men, men speak to men. So if you want men to come shop, you're going to need to speak speak to them through men, right. you know? So there's a perfect example, perfect place for you to be here on the app. I hope you'll consider yeah. opening your- Yeah, open. I'm, I'm definitely coming to look at it. I think it's- Okay, a, cool. A, you know, I, I was telling Jessica though, you know, it's because it, we have these different kinds of philosophies and it's just the way we were raised, right? It's like, I love to do spontaneous things. I do a live show and I'm getting better at this, right? And I'm now doing this live show twice a week over on the relevant app. And so I'm getting better at just improv and just going for a half an hour and, and I'm so comfortable now that it's just like, let's go, turn it on. But um, I was raised and, and still in the back of my head, even with the video, like tonight, I'll be editing and editing and editing to get it. It, it was an old quote about when a fool wants to say something, uh, a fool speaks when he wants to say something and a wise man speaks when he has something to say. So it's obviously an old uh, uh, a Japanese proverb, I think. Um, but that that has always kind of driven me with how I post things. I will look at things, you know, five different directions, and I might get ready to post it ten times and edit it and put another, you know, before all, you know, ready. So the spontaneity and again the gift of of and and is it just not giving a fuck? Is that what, yeah, that so I don't think it? it's a gift and I think you can totally get it. Like, I don't think this is something that I have that you can't have. Like, I think that this is a very, like, I'm, this isn't me calling you old school. This is me saying we're old school, but your mindset is old yeah. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. right. So your mindset is like my, like my mindset when I used to work at Fortune, for Fortune 100 brands that everything has to be perfect, buttoned up. We've got to get approvals. We've got to have a plan before we get started. Nothing, you know, nothing can, everything has to be bulletproof and buttoned up, mm -hmm. but that doesn't work on social media. Yeah. It's too, that's what works in Hollywood with production level stuff, mm -hmm. but we're not working with production level stuff. We're working with stuff that's informational, that's quick. And you have to always remember that nobody's watching. Mm -hmm not like right like no if people are watching they love you and so once they start watching they're going to be like they're going to just be happy that you have more content you know they're they're especially now with everything being live like i find i'm like happy when people watch my live streams that are already posted but i'm thinking i got to keep creating fresh content for them because nobody wants to watch something from two weeks ago they want to watch something from today you know, that's the world we live in now. So right. I, it's funny because you and I have talked, you know, a few times back and forth over the course of the past few years. And every time we've talked, you've said, I'm working on the, da, da, da. I'm going to have this perfect. I have to have this perfect. And I would just, my biggest advice mm -hmm. to you, and I needed yep. it for myself is there's no such thing as perfect. Yep. And perfectionism is an, is an excuse or is a, is veiled fear. Okay. Because you're afraid that if you're not perfect, then someone's gonna see that or your reputation's gonna be damaged in some way or whatever. But like, nobody cares, right? Like, except yeah. you. Yes. Nobody's version of perfect is, is, is it. So just keep going, just start. Like I would say this to all creators, get a few things you love to talk about and just start talking about them. In the beginning, no one's watching, okay? Two people are coming and they're your best friends, okay? Yeah. So like, and like, and if two people come and they still come, you have fans, you know, like, so it's different now. It's not about figuring out what the content is first and then creating it and then getting the re reactions to it. It's actually 
getting the reactions to it while you're creating it, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, well, it's, I, I, I'm getting that taste now. I've had that for six months now on, 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 on coming up on, on Relevant. And I agree, you know, it's, and there's no doubt. Again, I've been fighting against that, that quote that, that has been coming back over and over again. Right, but again, like that is not, those quotes came way before social media. And the time <laughs> yeah. is now to like go fast yeah. because yeah. Like, nobody's paying. If people have such a, uh, a low um, attention span that they used to have a lot more attention span. I mean, there was one newspaper, there were 10 channels, right? There was like, you'd have to be perfect, but now it's like, boom, boom, boom. Everybody don't, nobody remembers shit. Yeah, yeah. It's coming at us from all angles. And imperfection is actually more highly valued. Like when someone sees you being human, Mm -hmm. and vulnerable, making a mistake, apologizing for a mistake, looking yeah. stupid, drooling on yourself during your bong hit, whatever, they see themselves in you. Yeah. And that's what makes you relatable. And that's what makes, you know, you able to like, really connect with people, you know, versus being like a personality. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. I agree. And, you know, that's part of what I've been learning from doing this. Again, you know, when I first started this, much like you, I had to evolve and move things around, right? I planned on doing this two years ago, you know, before. And uh, I ended up going to Jamaica and ended up going, you know, to Portugal and ended up traveling around and not being able to, to make it happen. And, you know, part of this whole thing was I, I initially wasn't even going to ever be on the screen. I was only going to use this animated character that I was using that I created in this whole virtual world. And I was going to do everything from that environment. And, you know, it was only after I got some good feedback from some people that weren't actually my family and said, no, I'm actually enjoying watching you on the, on the screen. This is kind of cool. And, and you're bringing on really interesting people and I'm learning something every time that you do one of these things. So I'm loving it. And I'm like, Oh people my God! With people don't connect with a cartoon character unless it's like yeah. you know yeah. Bart Simpson, but like you know people <laughs> people like Kristen Yoder is a perfect example of this too. She's one of she's like you. She really doesn't did not want to be on camera. Hate talking to the camera. I hate it. Da, da, da. I hate how I look. You know, but it's like get over it because people don't. People also hate how they look. And so they think that you're brave for being there, how you look and just being you because they could never do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, so those are the people that you're going to inspire, you know, mm -hmm. like, that's why sometimes I'll do a full face of makeup and a wig and a whole thing and be ready to go. And sometimes I'll just, you know, be me because it doesn't matter. It's just what I want to do. So yeah, stop overthinking yeah. it, start doing it. I love it. So when are you going to make a trip and come to Amsterdam and come visit? <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be well, you, a while. You've got dogs. That's right. You've got doggies. I have two dogs. I just got children. a puppy. Um, and uh, I do, I think Amsterdam will definitely be on the list, but I don't think it's like, it's not a, it's not a this year or next year type of situation. Okay. Well, then I have to come and visit you. Yeah, or we can see each other somewhere, but like, I don't know, in terms of travel, okay, I'm not doing any conferences anymore. I mean, I don't have the money. And I also feel like I see all the same people that I see on LinkedIn. I can DM them there and I actually get more of their attention than I get like while I'm there. Oh, hey, it's so good to meet you. Great, let's get COVID from each other. Like, <laughs> you know. Um, and you know, everybody's thinking that in the back of their head, whether they want to or not. Yeah. Here, so, here. Hey man, try this. No, no, no. I never <laughs> share. I'm always like, these are mine. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure. I, th I think that I think that Mila and I got it from being in the back of the, you know, it's so funny because stoners are the same, you know, and no matter where we are, we're in this big conference room in Portugal and we go out the back of the door in the back alley where all the cars are parked and there's 50 stoners out there all smoking out there. But we were all pretty tight in there, you know, and there was a lot of smoke being blown around and everything. And, you know, it was like, oh, 
And that's why I'm excited for this weekend in Michigan because it's like a consumption event and everyone's going to be smoking everywhere and it's actually legal. And so I don't have to like hide. I would never go to a thing where I have to hide. Like I could just be home. And you what's that, 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 that called again so that I can put up the, the website? Oh, it's called Saturnalia. And it is this Saturday, August 20th in Muskegon, Michigan. It's uh, $20 for a ticket and 30 at the door. And there's a VIP $250 package that includes like about $500 worth of weed. So you should get it. And um, it's 10% uh, off if you use code high curious, all one word. And um, yeah, it's in Muskegon. I'm so excited. I'm bringing my roller skates. Oh God. It sounds like it's going to be a real party. I know. I want to go. I want to go. I know. I, I know. I'm really excited. Um, I helped them find some of their local influencers um, to work with. And their my friend Christina Babes and Buds podcast is going to be uh, hosting there with her friend Rochelle. Hi, I'm Shelly. And um, we're going to, they have this like, a uh, tricked out schooly bus that we're going to be traveling in. Uh, so I'm very excited. It's going to be great. I just saw some of those uh, vases for the first time. Uh, 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 Jessica mentioned them. Oh, is that, is that the one? That, that's a yeah. different. No, that's different. different. Okay, different one. Yeah, I, it was this the first time. Chill. These are, this is like the best thing ever. This is, um, it's stainless steel and it also opens like this Ooh. so that you can clean it ceramic oh. on the inside yeah it's pretty great oh. have you seen the freeze pipes yeah uh, with the little glycerin uh i i it took me a long time but i ended up getting one here those that's a very smooth uh uh pipe fit also yeah you can put um ice in the bottom of, oh, yeah. uh, of this yeah that's what i thought when it opened up like that i go oh that's a perfect spot to drop some ice it is, it is, yeah. yeah but i just use it as my like daily and sometimes i don't i usually don't put ice in it unless it's real hot out Oh, that's so cool. Well, yes. dude, I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm thrilled. I think this is a brilliant idea. Great Thank pivot. You. Well done. And Thank I will you. put up the website and everything up there again. And, um, you. and uh, I'll check in probably back with you in a few months because uh, in one way or another, I, I, I definitely interested. This is. Uh, yeah, you got to get your you got to get your rate card up there. Yeah, exactly. Great All idea. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Bye bye. Thank See you, you Captain. Bye. 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 Dude, how cool is that? Unbelievable. That lady has got it all going on. I am very excited to see how this all turns out because it looks like a very, very fascinating new business. For me, I am just going to float around here a little bit more. And I'm going to be back on Saturday. Uh-oh. Wait a second. Hold everything. Um, okay, I might be here a little bit longer than I thought. Um, you guys go have a good time, and uh, I'll clean up this mess right here. See you guys on Saturday. Bye. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter, far out man.